Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Prime Minister had avoided spelling out her education policy, but now a photographer has snapped a confidential briefing note which makes clear ministers want to push ahead with new grammar schools. But it will only be an option in the consultation paper, and the top official at the Education Department who wrote the note says even he doesn't know what the Prime Minister thinks of the details or if the Lords will back the policy. Our political correspondent Michael Crick reports. It's a hazard deal? of the job. Ministers and officials are told they mustn't hold open sensitive papers while walking up Downing Street, lest they get caught on camera by a photographer who specialises in such pictures. Yet today, one more Whitehall figure fell prey, exposing a report from the top official in the Education Ministry, Jonathan Slater. Slater's memo reveals that the government's forthcoming consultative document says we will open new grammars. But Mr Slater adds that the Education Secretary, Justin Greening, thinks this option should only be pursued... Once we have worked with existing grammars to show how they can be expanded and reformed in ways which avoid disadvantaging those who don't get in. I simply don't know what the PM thinks of this, but it sounds reasonable to me, and I simply can't see any way of persuading the Lords to vote for selection on any other basis. There are just 164 grammar schools left in England, concentrated on conservative areas such as Buckinghamshire and Kent and Trafford, where one of the MPs, Graham Brady, is chairman of the Tory backbenchers and has long campaigned for more selective schools. What does he think of today's leak? Well, it's very hard to know what to make of a, a little snatch of uh, text uh, picked up on camera like that. Uh, but I do take it as encouragement that there is some discussion going on in government about the possibility of removing the statutory ban on new selective schools. It's a crazy ban. Grammar schools are very popular with parents. Wherever they exist, people support them. And all the opinion polls suggest that people would like to have more of them. Jeremy Corbyn campaigning today with the band UB40 feels so strongly about the issue it reportedly led to the breakup of a past marriage when his wife sent their son to a grammar school. Whilst uh, I've often heard many conservative politicians talk about bringing back the grammar school, I've never ever heard any conservative politician ever call for the return of the secondary modern school. Right. And once we go into selectivity of education at the age of 11, I think that's a backward step. But weren't grammar schools the best way for people to climb the ladder? Some people. But what about the others that are left behind? Right. Of course, it is that the decision's made at 11 and it's, and, and it's binding and it just seems very odd to me to, to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life at the age of 11. The law forbids any new grammar schools, but ministers are now letting existing grammars expand and even allowed this one in Kent to build an annex nine miles away. Today's memo suggests we'll get a lot more of that, but... As the top official at the Education Department warns ministers, changing the law to allow new grammars might not get through the House of Lords. Well, with me here is Angela Rayner, Labour's shadow education spokesperson, and we're joined from Westminster by the Conservative MP Gareth Johnson, a supporter of new grammar schools. And, well, having uh, tried to introduce them through the back door in Kent, it looks like from Downing Street at any rate they're going to bring them in through the front door. Uh, is it going to happen? Well, I, I certainly hope so. Uh, grammar schools are good, popular schools. They do provide social mobility. It seems to be madness at the moment that we can have new schools that can specialise in performing arts and music, but we can't have new schools that can specialise in maths and English. Uh, we know that children are different. They all have different skills. Some have vocational skills, others have academic skills. And therefore, we shouldn't be trying to create a one-size-fits-all system. We need grammar schools to help provide a diverse range of secondary school education in this country. Right. Well, so diversity and uh, opportunity, these are the watchwords of Labour.
Well, they're not opportunistic. In grammar schools, we know that the attainment gap is wider. In Kent, it's 34%. In Acne, it's 8%. Um, we know that it has a tremendous effect on um, everybody's opportunity to raise the standards. Grammars do not work. I know that they can be popular for parents because certainly parents from my background, I come from a working ba class background, we want to see our kids do well. And some people think that grammars is the answer to that. But we know that the evidence is that grammars aren't the answer to that. And actually, what we need to do is raise the standards in all our schools, and that's the way of delivering good educational outcomes for everybody. And 11 is a very early age, Mr Johnson, to determine that somebody is going to set forth on a course of action which, educationally, will never come anybody else's way again after that 11-year mark. I think what this is trying to ensure is that it's horses for courses. You know, we, we don't seem to have any controversy associated with streaming within schools. Yet, for some reason, people object to streaming between schools. There doesn't seem to be a lot of logic there. If you look at comprehensives, where there's some very good comprehensives, uh, the catchment area around those comprehensive schools tend to have very expensive houses. So you get selection by wealth in those areas. What I would like to see is more grammar schools, so there's less of a scrum around the existing one. If you have a less predictable 11 plus, then tutoring has less of an impact. And we can ensure that children do reach that social mobility ladder that we all want them to. You know, education should be about ensuring each child reaches their maximum potential. And so if you have a child that's good at education, is good at academic work, good at maths and English, then they can thrive in a grammar school environment. And so we should be shutting the door. What is the objection? It. What is the objection to simply raising standards for all children? Why but should you segregate some particular group who can manage at 12 or 11 rather to do something? Uh, which for some reason is going to be denied to everybody else thereafter. But I believe that grammar schools can help to raise the standards in all schools. I think it's a big myth that they hold back schools in their local area. I've got four grammar schools in my constituency. The surrounding non-selective schools are excellent and actually more popular than some right, of the grammar let schools. Put, let let so, me put that then, then, then to Angela Rayner. Well, I talked about the big gap in attainment from Kent to somewhere like Hackney. We know through the London Challenge that where schools work together, the peerage and the, the ability to co-exist together and to work with each other actually raise is a bar for every child and we know that children work at different academic speeds and grammars just don't have that for us there's many people that are around today that are in really good professional jobs that failed their 11 plus and that stigma is still with them today they've still got professional jobs amazing people but you know what grammars are not the answer and modern comprehensive telling children that they're failures at such a young age is terrible and it shouldn't be condoned by any politician and twice mr johnson uh, angela rayner has raised this point of the difference between Kent and Hackney. Kent, 34% behind Hackney in terms of uh, uh, equality of opportunity as a result of having grammar schools. Well, look, if you come to Kent, you'll see the grammar schools are hugely popular. You have many parents who would want to send Our their children... Our popularity is does... not the question yeah. I asked you. But, but it, it is, it it is what hold... it does to the educational but, system. But it doesn't hold back other schools in that area. The answer here is to have more well, grammar schools so there's Kent, more choice. You live there, you're an MP. Yes, and, and what the answer is, is to have more yeah, grammar schools. Yeah, yeah, but why has it gone wrong in Kent? It, I would argue it hasn't gone wrong in Kent. We have more why are the people, figures so bad, then? Th no, we have more people moving to Dartford than anywhere else around the why edge of London. Why are the figures in your county, D your county, it, it, so just bad? Just let me make this point, please. Uh, no, no, the I'm asking you a point. I'm asking the education you the questions which you're not replying to. I am asking you why the figures in Kent are so bad. But uh, my answer is the figures in Kent aren't that bad. You have an excellent education system in Kent. You have choice. You have children who are able to go to vocational schools, if that's their speciality, children who can go to schools mm -hmm. like grammar schools that specialise in English and maths and so on. That has to be a sensible you thing. You have a two-tier system. Yeah. And, and it, it's not a two-tier system. What it is is saying that children, that children are not all the same, and so therefore we shouldn't so you're be saying squeezing that the children them all that you decide package. are more clever than others and will no. do all right and the others can rot because no, that's what the system is in terms of grammars that's what you're saying is that one group are elite will pick them out the best and the rest of them well they can just carry on and stay in the secondary modern or within the comprehensive system what we need to do surely is around the raise and attainment for all children because we know that children learn at different levels and, and very, that helps very briefly mr johnson we don't know what Ms. Ms. may thinks what the prime minister thinks do you know what she thinks 
I, I don't know. I hope there's a conversation that's going on tonight. So I, I certainly think there will be. But I genuinely think that we have an opportunity here to increase social mobility. Okay, we but can that's do a point you've made already. But thank you very much indeed for thank joining you. us, Ms Johnson and uh, Ms Rayner. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you. Now, the continued existence of some grammar schools is one of those touchstone issues that triggers very strong feelings on both sides of the education debate. And there have already been reports that our new Prime Minister, Theresa May, of course herself a former grammar school pupil, might agree to new grammars in less well-off areas of England. And today, thanks to what can fairly be described as something of a schoolboy error itself, we learned that the government is indeed ready to agree to more grammar schools, provided certain conditions are met. A document outlining the details excuse me, was photographed under the arms of a civil servant walking up Downing Street. Yes, honestly. As on most Tuesday mornings, there was a cabinet meeting today with the usual faces strolling into number 10. But one official arriving here was carrying a briefing note and not for the first time in this particular street, he didn't cover it up, which meant courtesy of a good lens, we could all read what it said. It read the CONDOC or consultation document says we will open new grammars and the Secretary of State's clear position is that this should be presented in the CONDOC as an option. It rather gave away Theresa May's desire to lift the ban on new grammar schools. State grammar schools which select pupils at the age of 11 after an exam have divided the education world for decades. Do they push up standards in state schools for gifted children? Or do they cream off the brightest and wealthy at the expense of those from poorer backgrounds? Teaching unions are clear which theory they believe. I certainly don't think these plans would help social mobility in any way. All the evidence shows that there are less disadvantaged kids in grammar schools and that standards overall decline when you bring them in, so they won't work. A ban on new grammar schools in England was imposed by Labour in 1998, but many parents of pupils in existing grammars like this one think there should be more. They've all taken an exam to get there, so I think they want to be there and they've worked hard, and I think that's the difference. Some children may be in non-grammar, they've got to go to school, but they don't want to. The neighbouring MP here wants grammar schools in his area, but admits Theresa May will first have to prove state grammars can help pupils from less affluent families. I'd like to see other children like me from ordinary backgrounds having that opportunity. So I am pleased uh, the government are looking seriously at this and I'll be urging them to, uh, to show resolve. But it's not kids from ordinary backgrounds who go to grammar schools, it's kids who have middle class parents who can afford the tuition so they pass the 11 plus. That's the problem with them. Well, that isn't universally true. I think grammar schools do help some children, a number of children from deprived backgrounds. One day, ministers and officials will learn to put their briefing notes behind a cover. But until they do, we continue to learn interesting things about government policy. It is clear Theresa May wants to open new grammar schools. It's not clear, however, how she can get it passed first the House of Commons and then the House of Lords. Chris Ship News at 10, Downing Street. Well, you would have thought, what with Downing Street being perhaps the most photographed street in Britain and all, that ministers and officials would have learnt by now not to have confidential documents on display. And after all, today's blunder was hardly the first. Perhaps the most serious involved the senior counter-terror officer, Bob Quick. He walked into Downing Street with details of a major anti-terror operation on display. That operation had to be rushed forward and Mr Quick resigned. But ministers have been caught out too. In 2011, then International Development Secretary Andrew Mitchell was photographed with protected papers, raising concerns about instability in Afghanistan. And in the early days of the coalition, this time outside the Treasury, Danny Alexander was snapped through the window of his car with a draft copy of the spending review revealing hundreds of thousands of public sector jobs were under threat and they are not the only ones there are more examples of documents caught on camera on our website itv.com forward slash news still it keeps us in business so perhaps we shouldn't be discouraging them while the government and the civil servants are grappling with the construction of a bespoke brexit institutions are having to divine what it will mean for them and how to deal with all this uncertainty Chief amongst them is the universities and colleges. Our policy editor Chris Cook is here with news of a deal for universities with the government and what the Prime Minister is planning to do about selective schools, known to you and me as grammar schools. But let's start first with the universities. What's happening? So the big thing to remember about universities is they, they work on three or four year cycles, first of all. And secondly, EU students right now are treated like British students. So they pay the same fees as British students, they get the same access 
to loans. At the moment, today, right now, uh, as of this morning, it's been possible to apply for a degree at a British university for next year, so for 2017 yeah. entry. Universities are really worried that students from the EU, who are about 5% of their student body, are not going to apply because they don't know what the fee regime will be potentially in 2020, and they're not certain they'll have access to the student loan scheme. So they may run out of cash. So what they are appealing tomorrow, uh, Dame Julia Goodfellow, who's the Vice Chancellor of Kent University and the President of Universities UK, which is the sector representative body, she's giving a speech basically calling on the government to guarantee people who we recruit for next year are going to have the full rights as sort of EU citizens to finish their degrees. It's Otherwise, there's just too much uncertainty for EU students. Exactly, and they worry they'll lose a big chunk of, of those students. It's worth bearing in mind that universities are brilliant lobbyists in Whitehall, but they do it almost all very quietly. This is a scream of desperation. Right. Not only that, there was news today from an unexpected source under somebody's arm about selective schools. That's right. So the... Prime Minister, we have had strong inkling suspicions, wants to bring back grammar schools into England. And that's very difficult because bringing back grammar schools requires you to change the 1998 Education Act. It's hardwired into statute. It's very difficult to do. What happened today, and there's a, you can see on the screens behind us here, there is a, um, a, a senior civil servant, uh, Jonathan Slater, who is the, the permanent secretary of the Department for Education, walked into Downing Street brazenly holding a piece of paper up which reveals quite embarrassing things. First of all, it does confirm, yes, the government does want to bring back grammar schools. It also confirms that Justine Greening, who's the Education Secretary, says that these, these ideas should be presented as an option mm. and they should only be pursued once we've been clear that we can do work with existing grammar schools to deal with the problems associated with grammar schools, which are namely that poor kids tend to do worse in grammar yeah. school areas and rich kids tend to do better. So where does this leave us? So Jonathan Slater's proposal is, why don't we come up with a scheme whereby we will introduce to the House of Lords and to, to Parliament um, a, pro a proposal to amend the 1998 Education Act only after we have got the grammar schools to work out some sort of deal whereby uh, they show that they can improve the way they perform so they don't harm social mobility as much. That is what we in the trade call kicking the can down the road. A cunning plan. Thank you very much indeed. I've been